Hey World Civilizations, Mr. Laster with you, and in this short review video, we're going to be talking about Rome. So on your study guide, uh, you're going to be looking at Unit 3, Classical Rome. We're going to talk about a couple things, uh, how Rome went from being a republic, and we'll remind you what a republic is, to being an empire, and we'll remind you what that is, and then also we're going to look at Christianity and how it developed a little bit. But again, this is brief. This is an answer to all your questions, so refer to earlier study guides. Uh, and, of course, your notes and other videos on this. So let's get started kind of <clears throat> understanding uh, the Roman Republic. Rome actually is founded around the year 750 B.C. Um, there is a lot of kind of mythology around the founding of Rome, Romulus and Remus. Anyways, it begins as a monarchy. For about 250 years, uh, Rome is ruled by a king. But after a uh, particularly tyrannical king is driven out of Rome in about 509 B.C.E., a republic is established. Now, this is uh, similar to a democracy in that it involves the voting of people. However, it's not a direct democracy like we saw in Athens and Greece, for example. Uh, it was designed to limit the power of any one individual, and groups of citizens uh, worked to establish a system of law and wield power. Now, how did this look then? Uh, well, basically, you had two groups of people in, in the early Roman Republic. Patricians, who were the wealthy landowners, and plebeians, who were everybody else. They might have owned land, they might not have. The patricians uh, elected 300 members from the, their class to form a senate. And this senate, out of the wealthy landowners, uh, wrote laws and basically governed Rome. They would elect the consuls as well. And so there's the senate, 300 members, and two consuls elected for one-year terms. These consuls would run the government from day to day, and they would also command the army. And they would make sure the other one didn't get too powerful or too, too strong. Um, so that was, that's the kind of the basics of the Roman Republic. But the Republic starts to have issues when the rich keep getting richer. Uh, and the plebeians uh, start to get very upset that the patricians are getting more and more power, controlling more and more land. And the plebeians begin to demand more rights. So... Eventually, things change in the Republic, and the plebeians are allowed to uh, elect their own kind of body, governing body, which we call tribunes. Uh, and they put a check on the power of the Senate. They were allowed to veto laws that harmed the Republic, um, and they continue to grow in power. Um, but the Senate begins to see these tribunes as a threat to its own power and privilege, and therefore it leads to a lot of instability uh, in, in Rome. Now, the Roman Republic is very successful. We see the Romans under the Republic conquer all of Italy, north to south, uh, and eventually in three different Punic Wars uh, against, the, uh, against Carthage, we see the Romans grow, in, the Roman Republic grow in a lot of power, basically taking over the Mediterranean. Uh, they also uh, conquer certain areas in Spain and Turkey, etc. But as we know, there's still going to be some conflict between the plebeians, and uh, the patricians in this republic. And so uh, more of this greed, inequality, instability grows until uh, basically uh, there is total instability. And so, uh, excuse me, um, the, there are going to be changes that occur in, in Rome. First, it starts with changes in the Roman army where you have... Uh, Certain uh, generals gain a lot of power, um, where they start to raise their own armies and promise land to plebeians who do not have land, and this is going to make them more and more powerful. Eventually, it leads to civil war in Rome and a collapse of the Republic. Uh, there's an attempt to establish kind of a three-man ruling group. The first triumvirate, Crassus, Pompey, and Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar was a military hero of, of Gaul or modern France, but that kind of falls apart as uh, Caesar takes ultimate control and then is assassinated. So another uh, group of three people come to power, uh, what we call the Second Triumvirate, Octavian, who would become known as Augustus, Antony, and Lepidus, one of Caesar's former commanders. Anyways, Octavian, who's Caesar's heir and nephew, basically takes control. He ends up winning this big civil war that breaks out between the three of them, and by the age of 32, Octavian stands alone. Uh, 
Uh, and he officially takes control of Rome, ending the Roman Republic and becoming emperor. Uh, he rules as emperor for 45 years, ushers in the age of Augustus and the Roman Empire. So this is uh, really kind of how we move to uh, seeing a Roman Empire develop. And this is going to be extremely important uh, for understanding kind of the next uh, three, four hundred years of the Roman Republic. We see some very good emperors, for example, the period of five good emperors, which leads to the Pax Romana, which is the Roman peace, the time period of general peace throughout uh, Rome, but it also lead to other problems. For example, um, the period of time where there are about 26 different emperors in a very short time period. Um, and kind of lead to a lot of instability as well. Ultimately, the Roman Empire grows to its uh, height uh, under uh, a little bit after Augustus. It kind of expands a little bit more and grows to its height, and then over time will slowly, excuse me, decline. Uh, eventually, by the 300s, uh, you'll see Christianity come into play, and uh, the Roman Republic will be start to be attacked uh, from the outside. It'll split into Eastern and Western, uh, the Eastern and Western Roman Empire, and the West will crumble whereas the East becomes known as what we call the Byzantine Empire. Anyways, let's move on and talk a little bit about the development of Christianity. Again, Christianity develops in this region of the world known as kind of the Holy Land collectively. It's an area that's sacred to uh, the monotheistic religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Uh, it develops in the region of Judea, modern-day Israel, when uh, a out of this kind of chaos of um, uh, or, or uh, tension between Romans and the Jewish people uh, of, of Judea, the, this young man, this guy named Jesus of Nazareth, uh, of Nazareth, a Galilean Jew, born probably around the year 7 BCE, uh, he begins teaching about uh, monotheism and uh, which was not different from Judaism, but was also teaching some kind of radical ideas. Um, people viewed Jesus as a revolutionary, and therefore he was condemned uh, to death. But his followers continued to spread this new religion of Christianity, which is kind of characterized by the, the golden rule, do unto others what you'd have them do unto you. Um, he was preaching uh, kind of a new era of Judaism at the time, which would become known as Christianity. Anyways, his followers start to spread Christianity, this monotheistic religion, uh, across the Mediterranean. First throughout Israel, then to places like Greece, uh, Rome, and uh, even places in Africa. So uh, these leaders like Simon Peter, Paul of Tarsus, become uh, very important in the spread of Christianity, which um, spreads it, of course, to Rome, where it is uh, persecuted for hundreds of years. Um, but around the year 300, uh, the Roman persecution ends as uh, the Emperor Constantine converts to Christianity. And so, of course, the Emperor converts, uh, so the people, therefore, uh, many of them convert as well. He declares religious tolerance uh, throughout the, the Roman Empire, and then eventually the Roman Empire converts completely over to Christianity. Uh, so the Roman Christianity gains a really good foothold in the, the former footprint of the Roman Empire and from there spreads throughout Europe and then through, from Europe to the New World, etc. Um, so that's, that's it. That's a little bit longer than I wanted to go. We're coming up on about eight minutes. Uh, this gives you a little bit of the basics of the Roman Empire and uh, the spread of Christianity. Um, that's it. So have a good, have a good day. Hopefully this gets you, uh, uh, started on that section of your study guide.